Welcome back. Just in case you joined us, this is KBC Lunchtime News. We are in the business segment. We are looking at AI in smartphone, more or less a new technology that is uh, being adopted by phone manufacturing companies. And I'm joined by Frederick Cheng, who is a PR manager at Oppo. Before we uh, had that technical hitch, I had asked whether, because in most phones we have one version, a pro version, or more or less, um, now that you have phones that have... AI. With that really dent, somebody who wants to buy a phone with AI capabilities, dent your pocket? Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. This is because uh, as OPPO, we've made a company-wide decision to be able to democratize AI across the board. Mm -hmm. So our devices run within three major categories. Mm -hmm. So we have the flagship phones, we have the mid-range phones, whereby, for example, the recently launched Reno 12 mm -hmm. falls under that, and we have the budget phones. So out of this, because we've made a company a decision to democratize AI, mm -hmm. we will do our best to be able to integrate the different aspects of AI that we bring into our phones into three, these three price categories mm -hmm. without necessarily dipping into our customers' pockets. And because mostly people don't stay with the phone for five, ten years, you find one or two years somebody has changed the phone, how are you addressing the issue of durability? Because we are also moving towards uh, a lot of technology in one gadget. So in regards to this, we do a lot of testing in regards to our phones, because a typical Oppo phone would stay last a minimum of four years. So with this, uh, we do tests from yeah, temperature tests to humidity tests mm -hmm. to typical drop tests, just to be able to take through our phones through the dif different uh, in-day activities that we go through. So for that, we're able to make sure that even when you buy this phone today, mm -hmm. it will be able to serve you at least for a minimum of four years and it could even be more. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about the battery life? So in regards to battery life, this is also something we are working on. We've been working on, and this is in regards to integration of AI in, uh, for our chipsets and also our battery, whereby AI is able to learn the patterns of how you use your phone, and with that, they ca it can be able to adjust everything mm -hmm. and be able to be as efficient and as power effective as possible we based on your needs. Yes, and we have seen uh, phone companies manufacturing phones that are um, friendly to persons with disabilities. Um, and now AI infusing, have you also factored in persons with disabilities in your, in your gadgets? So this year is the first year for us in regards to giving AI functionality to our phones. And the world of AI is enormous. We keep on learning new ways, we keep on like, getting into new directions and definitely mm -hmm. uh, as we proceed on to new, newer devices and newer software services, we'll continue to also incorporate other groups of people who are currently not incorporated in our devices. We are looking at a lot of technology in just one phone. In the last 20 years a lot has changed. Now we have video, we can call, you can uh, you can zoom someone, you can do WhatsApp, you can do your transactions. What are we looking at in the evolution of phones in terms of technology? Now we have AI in phones. Yes, so as I said before, AI is just at its beginning. So there's so many more things that are going to come in regards to AI, mm -hmm. from health to education, just to be able to give you the best experience as a smartphone user as we continue on with life. So mm -hmm. this world is really, really evolving and we'd also do our best to be able to give the best experience to each of our users mm -hmm. as we continue progressing on in regards to technology and innovation. And you've mentioned something on chips. How, do you, how important is an energy efficient chipset? They are really, really important because that's the one thing that enables a, a phone to last more than the typical two, three years. Mm -hmm. A chipset is able to be power efficient. It's able to look into the needs of a device. So you see, for example, like for you, I would assume you are constantly on your phone. Mm -hmm. So your chipset, based on the kind of chipset that you have, you will continue, it will continue um, learning your patterns. It will continue to be as efficient as possible mm -hmm. based on the, you are in your needs and your requirements. In 30 seconds, on a broader perspective, how smartphone manufacturers balancing innovation and budget? We are doing our best. It's not easy, but we are doing our best in regards to that. And that's why you find that we 
how we are able to group our devices into three different categories. Mm -hmm. So you see for a, a customer who needs a fast, high-performing device, this customer would, I would easily place them at a mid-range to a flagship phone. For a customer who's just using the typical daily, daily devices, this customer would fall under a mid-range and a lower budget. Additionally, we're also working with different companies to be able to also give that financial assistance to our customers. If you're not able to purchase this phone at this moment, we have buy now, pay later services. Mm -hmm. We have trading services that you're working with different companies across the board just to be able to bring this technology closer to our users.